It was my sophomore year in college uh, on a beautiful uh, early fall day. Uh, and I was sitting outside uh, on the patio outside the university center uh, at Tennessee Tech uh, studying for an English quiz that I was going to have in just a few minutes. Uh, my roommate and a friend of mine came out of the university saying that uh, a plane or, or something had hit uh, a large building in New York City. Now, I figured that it was a, a small prop plane or, or something like that, and it had been a, a pilot error and, and had accidentally hit a building. Uh, at that time, um, I didn't, nor did anyone else, fully understand uh, the magnitude of what uh, had happened. Now, many of us can remember where we were and what we were doing when we got the news of the events uh, in New York City and Washington, D.C., and uh, a field in rural Pennsylvania on this day 19 years ago. And it's amazing how vivid those details can be uh, for so many of us. Now, over the past couple of days and weeks, I've, I've seen a lot of people, on, especially on social media, uh, talking about how uh, this day 19 years ago uh, changed our country forever. And while I understand the sentiment, I can't help but ask if our country has changed in a positive way in 19 years. Now, to be sure, there was an initial change. There was this initial surge that brought about unity and community, a, a lot like when all of this COVID-19 situation uh, started up. There was this love for our country and the, the great freedoms that we have, but in all honesty, that was short-lived. The longer things went on, the love of neighbor and the willingness to support others, even those different from us, died out. See, we live in a world of, of fear, of, of terrorism, of racism, of ethical and uh, religious discrimination, hate and condemnation, especially of those not like us, and so many other types of evil. One of our lectionary texts for this week uh, reminded me of the world in which we currently are living. It comes from Exodus chapter 15, and the Egyptians have just been overcome by the waters of the Red Sea, which had been parted by Moses so the Israelites could, could cross on dry land. The beginning part of chapter 15 is a song that Moses and the Israelites sang about the events that have just transpired. The song begins with thanksgiving to God for the victory that God had brought to, to the Israelites. But then the song shifts to rejoicing over the demise of their enemies. See, it wasn't just enough to thank God for the victory they had, but they also began to celebrate over the destruction of their enemies. And I don't know about you, but, but in our post-9-11 world, I believe we spend way too much time hoping for and celebrating the demise of our enemy. Now, this doesn't even take into account the, this story and, and the events of our post-9-11 world. This doesn't even take into consideration uh, that we have to spend longer time in lines and airports, and it takes longer uh, to get into large gatherings of people like sporting events and concerts. We are still very individualistic, and we spend a, a large amount of time looking out for number one, looking out for ourselves more than anyone else. I can't help but wonder, are any of those things positive? But most importantly, though, are any of those things following the example that Jesus set for us? You know, how do all of these actions compare to, to Jesus' teaching that says in Matthew 5, 43 through 47, to love your enemies 
and pray for those who persecute you. Again, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. September 11th is a day that should never be forgotten. But my hope is that it's a day that inspires us to greater things, to greater love of God, greater love of neighbor, a greater willingness and ability to follow Christ's example of humility and sacrifice. That's what I hope that we take away and we remember or that we don't forget about 9-11. Now, hope everyone is doing well, but as always, if there is anything that I or the church can do for you, please feel free to let me know and we will do whatever we can to help you. But I also look forward to worshiping with you all at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, whether in person or online. Have a great rest of the day. And God bless.